I didn't ever think I would see the day where Kenny had his arm in a goat, but there he was. Hey folks, welcome to Life on Beagle Road and the absolute wildest delivery we have ever had. Little Zip was our last goat due in November. She was actually due on Thanksgiving Day and kindly waited until after Thanksgiving to kid. Her delivery was definitely very challenging. I noticed her going into labor on a Sunday afternoon and you know, I put her in the kidding stall by herself and went down to check on her a few times and when I saw that she was getting to the point of starting to push, I stayed. I did not sleep well in the weeks leading up to Little Zip's kidding because I just like in my gut knew she was going to need help. She was huge. So she was either having triplets, which increases the likelihood that somebody is tangled up or two babies try to come out at once, or she was having really big kids. So I just, something just told me she was going to need help. So I was awake a lot during the night, checking the camera, making sure she was okay. And, uh, yeah, then she kidded in the middle of an afternoon, but oh well. This is why I watch them like hawks and make sure. Watching Zip push a bit and uh, I don't know, her contractions just didn't seem that strong. I had given her calcium earlier when I realized she was in active labor, but a bubble started to come out and so I'm like watching and the bubble keeps coming and the bubble keeps coming and more bubble is coming. And then like kind of like a second bubble and I'm like, oh crap, our are two kids trying to come out at the same time? Shoot. All right, we got the bubble coming out here. So that's good. That's what we want to see first. And then we're going to watch for our front hooves and nose. And oftentimes there's a little tongue sticking out from that nose. So I'm like, all right, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Watching her. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, out pops a head. What are you doing? I'm like, oh, okay, so that was the problem. The feet weren't coming out first. The head was first. The feet are probably either like bent or they could be totally back. Oh, that one's moving. Yeah, we're getting there. Can you, um, the, there's a big black toolbox, not that right. one, but a bigger one yeah, down there. Sure. There should be a suction, like, you know, baby nose <laughs> syringe yeah. kind of thing. Doing a good job, Mama. You got the head out. Shoulders are gonna be a little harder because we don't have legs yet. Well, then with the head out, she stopped contracting entirely. She wasn't pushing, but she wasn't pushing because there were no contractions. She had no urge to push. I mean, she just stood up at one point with a head sticking out of the back of her and I'm like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I decide, okay, I need to go in and see what's happening. Like I've helped goats before, but I've never straight up put my whole arm inside of a goat. But yeah, I had to, had to really get in there this time. And what I found was that this kid's shoulders were stuck on her hips. First, I tried to push back and loosen up one of those legs and pull it forward and help to alleviate that pressure. But I could not get the goat to push back at all presumably because the head was already out. So it's one of those things where I'm like, man, I wish I would have caught this sooner, but that's neither here nor there because here we are now. I had talked to the vet previously about this type of presentation and she had explained to me how you use the uh, like leg snare to loop it around the kid's head behind the ears and, and help the kid out that way. Um, so that's what I tried first. Like I said, I've helped goats before and uh, it always resolved pretty quickly. Um, there we go. Let's make sure around your ears here. Yep. There we go, mama. However, this time I was pulling and instead of the baby making progress, I was just pulling the baby and little zip was just moving too. So my mom came in and uh, she held little zip for me. Mind you, this is the first birth my mom has actually made it to. <laughs> Not one of the easy peasy baby pops out, cute and adorable, blah, blah, blah. Nope, it's this one where there is a stuck kid and the mom has stopped contracting. 
So fortunately she's not squeamish. She held mom. I pulled again and still nothing. I sent her to get Kenny. So I'm like, all right, one of us needs to be stronger here. Are you all making right. any headway? No, can you go get Kenny? Okay. I might need to have help too. I know mama. Those hip, those shoulders are not coming through there. Kenny came out and we tried the same thing with him pulling and me holding the goat. I have the snare. I just need your help. You have the what? I have the oh, snare. Yeah. yeah. So I don't need to reach? Um, no. Right. I'm going to stand her up. Okay. Unless you being on your side, or her being on her side is easier for you. But as long as this is looped around like this, mm -hmm. We're not gonna hurt the baby's neck, okay. but we need to pull in this direction. So if you want me to stand her up or move her out here on her side, I don't uh, know what What am saying. I going to be doing? Do you wanna hold her or do you wanna pull? You're probably stronger than me to pull. All right, I can pull. I'm pulling down. Out and down. Like that. Mm-hmm. All right, come on, mama. Come on, mama. Tight, man. Yeah. She's just going back in. Yep. Yep. Just keep pulling. It, you're not. We're gonna hurt both of them. We're not getting them out at this point. Okay. There's not another baby in there, but it's just the shoulders are not. They're they're tight, man. It's the shoulders are stuck. <laughs> I know, baby. I know. Next pulling out. Okay. I'm holding little zips still. Nothing is happening. We decide, okay, maybe if I pick her up and Kenny can pull down that way, maybe we'll get activity. Like if we let gravity help us, maybe this will help, right? Okay. So we try that. Maybe if you pick her up and I have more leverage to okay. pull down. Yep. Come here, mama. You got the baby? Yeah. Oh my. Okay, it's all right. It's all right. Hold on, Mama. <laughs> Nothing. Oh my. I know. I know. Push, girl. <laughs> Nothing. Like, still nothing, still nothing. He's like, I feel like I'm hurting the baby. Uh, you can see that Zip is in pain. She wasn't, she wasn't pushing it. I'm not getting like even. And then Kenny realized maybe if he went up farther in the birth canal, like towards the top of our hips, he seemed to have more room. So he kind of pushed the kid up and was pulling and working the kid out with his hand in addition to that. Um, I didn't, not only did I think like, wow, today is the first day that I had to really get my whole arm inside of a goat, uh, but I didn't ever think I would see the day where Kenny had his arm in a goat, but there, he was delivering a goat kid. Like this, this I can feel it, man. Yeah, it's, it's like so she's tight. down in there. What if I, I there's more room up here okay. than there is down there. All right. But I don't know how yeah. I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Oh, 0928. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Don't worry about that. Yep. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I just talked to her. Okay. There we go. We're getting summer. Shit. Shit. I know, baby. I know.
baby. Ah! I know. All right, there we go. go. Ah! I know. Got her. Him, her. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Finally, the kid comes out. Kenny hands him to me, and we all just kind of collapse in a heap. Me and Zip and the kid, and I am covered in just an absolute ton of amniotic fluid and afterbirth and just <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But Zip, to her credit, jumps right in and starts cleaning her baby and doing all the mom stuff. She seems like she's doing okay. Here's your baby. Here's your baby. Where's Jumpstart the uh, maternal? The, uh, the uh, kidding kit. That's okay, baby. It's okay. That's okay. The baby's definitely panting really hard. Um, that was a very traumatic birth. So I get some uh, some colostrum gel. I think it's called Jumpstart is the one that, that I use. Got that in his mouth just so, you know, I knew it was gonna be a little while until he was up and nursing and I wanted to make sure that he had some nutrition right away. He's laying there panting, but his panting is slowing. Mom's cleaning him up. And we're starting to relax. We're like, okay, okay. And I knew, based on the difficulty of this delivery, that this was going to be another buckling. <laughs> There's no way this is a doling. And sure enough, it was. But I'll tell you what, he looks like Mick Fleetwood's twin. Twin! At that point, I'm basically just sitting there basking in the glory of, Oh my gosh, I think it's going to be okay. I mean, I was definitely still nervous that the buckling hadn't nursed yet and it was going to take some time, but, you know, worst case scenario, I could bottle feed him. You know, I could milk her and bottle feed him and it would be fine. But everything seemed to be going okay. Whew, so that was scary. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just give you some more of this. Well, that's the first I've had to give a birth. Yeah, that mm. is the first you've had to. Oh, I didn't give birth, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> First delivered delivered holy cow. that was a lot of pulling i'm telling you right now like that was a lot yeah like i was struggling to get that my, sucker out of my there. mom was holding her and i was pulling and i just kept pulling her with me and like my mom had all her weight yeah he i mean he was stuck and this is why i obsessively watch my goats right when they're going to kid Oh God, could you imagine if you weren't here for that one? Yeah. This is why I haven't slept in a week. So you'll sleep tonight? Uh -huh. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, if he's up and nursing and bouncing around, I'll sleep tonight. Yeah. Then, with of course the camera off, because at this point no one's thinking about recording anything, uh, out pops another baby. Just whoosh, pop. Easy peasy. And... Oh my goodness, to my surprise and amazement and relief, it was a pulled doling. Yay! Yay! A pulled doling. So that means she's naturally hornless, one less goat to just bud. And finally, a doling. Finally, all those boys, they're lucky they're cute. When I got around to weighing them, the buckling was five pounds. So five pounds is a really good size Nigerian dwarf kid anyway. Uh, if you remember when Rhiannon kitted, her single buckling was five pounds um, and she's a bigger goat. This was a five pounder on a smaller goat and this is her first kidding. Uh, so it's, yeah, no wonder he was stuck. And then um, the doling was four pounds, which is still quite sizable. But you know, of course she looks like, you know, super dwarf compared to these monster bucklings but all is good everybody's healthy everybody's doing amazingly well uh little zip like it, it was as if nothing out of the ordinary happened um i did give her some antibiotics after the fact to just make sure that because we were reaching so far inside of her and repeatedly that she did not get an infection we did know pretty quickly that for the most part she would be okay if uh, if you rupture the artery or or 
uh, tear the artery inside the uterus, they do bleed out very quickly um, and there's really nothing you can do. But that does also mean that if they're okay, you know pretty quickly. And I made sure to give her some extra, I have like an iron supplement I can put on top of her feed. I did that for a few days, but it really went, really went okay, which is amazing. The moral of this story is that even with a challenging delivery, we made it, we did it, everything worked out. This was definitely our first truly challenging delivery and I'm just really happy that that Kenny was there to help and that everything turned out well um, but again this is one of those things where I share it with you because I want you to know that if we can do it you can do it this is all self-taught this is asking other people questions this is asking our vet questions um, but really it's just learning and doing and um, you know using your your natural instincts like Kenny figuring out to reposition the kid uh, a little bit. I mean he hasn't even delivered any human babies so that was just like oh well this makes sense biologically or spatially geometrically. I don't know. I don't know but it all worked out and now we've got five beautiful kids running around and only a week or so out from more babies. Yay! Think pink guys. Think pink for me please. Next time I will show you what happens when Mick goes on a date. Yes, our goats go on dates. At least the boys. The girls don't really go on dates. I don't let them date, but I let the boys date. <laughs>